Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about research papers and how they're organized. Now the reason that this is important for you and useful for you is understanding the structure will help you to read them a whole lot faster. Uh, because as you're looking for different types of information, you'll know exactly where to find it. Now, I, I would note that for a lot of people who are uh, reading research papers, especially as they're starting out, very often it feels a little bit dry. Um, it doesn't read like you, like a book, you know, it's not designed to be entertaining in that way, right? Um, research papers are designed for a very different purpose. They're designed to have a very distinct structure so that as you go through that paper, you can find information you, you, you need at very different locations. Uh, so it's a practical design uh, rather than a narrative design like you might see in a, in, a, in a book or other types of a news article, for example. So when we think about this, it's important to understand that anatomy to a research paper, that there are different pieces that are put together to accomplish an overall goal uh, of conveying scientific information efficiently. Um, so the toe bones are connected, uh, connected to the, uh, to the, to the legs, to the, the, to the spine, et cetera. So knowing the, how these different things are connected all together will help you to be able to find the things that you want quickly. Now, what I should know is what I'm about to tell you is actually, um, generally true. All right. You will find a wide variety of different types of papers that have their own structure. I would say about maybe 60 or 70 percent of papers will follow roughly the structure I present. And then you'll find a fair number of other papers that um, look somewhat different because they're trying to accomplish something different or they just have a creative style to doing it. So that's normal and that's to be expected. That being said, knowing this general structure will help you in the long run. Okay, so what is this overall structure? Well, first off, when you're reading a paper and looking at a paper, the first thing you're going to see right up front is the title. Um, so that title will be able to provide for you a very succinct statement about what the paper is about, one would hope. Uh, that's the intention as an author is writing a paper to give that very brief statement. Uh, in that title, sometimes you'll find key words that you're interested in as well. And uh, after the abstract, you'll also find key words as well that sometimes can be relevant for uh, seeing whether or not it's, it's useful to you. Another thing that you want to pay attention to as you're looking at this paper is the date. So how old is that paper? Uh, different, there's different perspective on, uh, perspectives on this. Some people I know will only look at papers that are published in the last five years. Um, I don't personally take that criteria. Um, from my point of view, the question is how relevant that paper is, but knowing how recent it is is really important, right? Because that paper will be based largely on the, the academic knowledge that has been produced before it. And if that paper is 20 years old, then all the work that's being produced is based upon the body of knowledge that exists at that time 20 years old, 20 years ago. So, uh, that, may not, that may still be a useful, that may still produce useful information, but uh, one should be aware that uh, the context will be different back then, uh, the uh, healthcare environment will be different back then, and you need to use that information uh, advisedly. Okay. Another thing that you'll look at right on the first page of that paper is the authors. Um, so one thing that you need to know about authors is the list of authors is very often, it has a specific order. So typically the first author on that list uh, is the author that's put the most effort into making that research study happen. So they've collected the information, they've done a lot of things. Uh, in terms of making that study happen, they've usually done the most work. Now often, that first author, however, is a graduate student. So they may not be the, the most expert person uh, who's on that paper. Um, but it's important to know who they are because very often the person who's the first author in the paper has gone off and written other papers in that topic as well. Um, now, as you go down the list of authors, usually the lower on that list of, of authors, uh, the less involvement someone has had uh, in the paper. Sometimes towards the end of that list, 
Uh, sometimes people have perhaps only read a little bit or given a little bit of advice uh, about that paper and may have had more peripheral involvement in write, doing that research. Now, there's an exception to this, which is the last author. Uh, depending on which field you're in, in some fields, the last author is actually the PI or the principal investigator who is a senior author on that paper. So for a lot of fields, the last author is actually also a prestigious position as well as the first author position uh, because that's seen as being the position that the person who's sort of the senior advisor look, overseeing this research is listed. So sometimes if you're looking for other papers re related to this area of scholarship, you wanna type in that last author's name too to see if other papers exist by that person because they might be an expert in this specific domain. Now, there's other things that you can look at with respect to authors, for example, their credentials. Do they have a PhD? Do they have uh, other types of uh, credentials that indicate that they would have expertise in this area? You could also look at the institutions, uh, academic institutions that they're at or, um, uh, or uh, healthcare institutions that they're at and see how prestigious those institutions are. To be honest, I rarely personally do this uh, because it actually takes a fair bit of digging to go and see uh, the, the, the background of an author. But if you're really committed to knowing the details of, of a paper, you could potentially look into that question. Um, another, uh, thing to look at when you're looking at these papers is the publication itself that the paper is in. Um, I'll talk about that in other contexts, but, um, you would want to look at what field that, that publication is. Is it devoted to that specific area? Um, what type of publication? Is the publication more focused on sort of practice guidelines? Is it uh, more focused on basic research? Uh, that can help you know a little bit about the paper. And then the other thing that's important for publications, and you'll get to know this as you get to know the publications in your, uh, the journals in your field better, is the reputation of that journal. Uh, journals that are, have a strong reputation, um, that, that indicates that the paper that you're reading probably has uh, undergone appropriate review and probably is a stronger, more uh, important paper than in other publications. That's a general rule that isn't true, always true. Um, uh, but there are also publications that do not have a good reputation. And these are publications that sometimes do not actually do a very effective review of the scholarship. And uh, those sort of junk publications may indicate that the paper that you're reading is actually not a very reputable uh, source of information. All right, so that's some like general information that you get just from looking at that first page of a paper. Uh, you'd also look at the uh, look at the abstract as well. So the abstract is essentially where the uh, the author has put together a brief statement of what what the what the background is, what how the, how the study was uh, conducted, uh, what the results were, and what the general conclusions were from that paper. Uh, so that's a very helpful source for you to uh, get initial information about what that paper is doing relatively fast. Generally, the style of this first page of a paper is uh, generally quite succinct uh, for that general background overview information. All right, then we move on to the introduction section or background section, depends on the, on the paper. Um, here, what the author is trying to do is provide you with a general background, a general introduction to what's going on. So usually that first paragraph is just going to be a, a brief a launching point for you to get some idea of what, what the overall topic is here. Um, and uh, there, in that introduction, you would hope that the author will give you some information about why you should care about this topic area, why this is important to the field. Okay. Um, now, if this is a paper that's looking at a specific health intervention of some sort, you'll see in this, uh, in the introduction some sort of explanation of what that intervention is and why it's relevant to healthcare. Um, you'll also see in that introduction, uh, the authors trying to put this, uh, this scholarship in the context of previous research that's been done in this area. So they'll provide references that talk about this in other area, uh, 
in other so, so domains, other research that's similar to the research that's being done here. And this gives you sort of the intellectual background for that paper. In doing so, they're going to be explaining the different types of information that you need to know in order to, to understand the scholarship that follows. So this is their chance as authors to give you the information that you need to uh, engage with their, their, their research. Now, some papers are based on specific theories or certain understandings of the world. Uh, and then though they might in the introduction also provide you with some information about the theory that they're basing this paper off of. Now, at the end of the introduction in the last paragraph, you'll typically find information about what their research is about, what their research question is. Uh, and sometimes if it's a quantitative research or a research that uses this approach, you'll actually find the hypothesis at that, typically at the very end of the paper, uh, at the end of the introduction section. All right. So the, the style of the introduction is typically, it is narrative, it is intended to be informative, uh, and it's really geared towards guiding the reader towards understanding the, the area, area of academia that is being studied there, and uh, the intellectual scholarship that you need to understand as a background. All right, so after the introduction, you'll typically find the method section. So the method section tends to follow a fairly structured approach. And the order of the bullets here is typically the order that you'll see in the method section. So first off, you'll find in there some information about the setting. So the reason that this is important is to understand uh, who, you know, where is the studying being done and who's engaged in this. So setting and sample will typically be up there at the beginning. A uh, sample being the people who are participants in the study or, uh, or other, where that information is coming from. You'll also find, typically soon after the setting, you'll find some information about the study design. Um, now this is an explanation of how the study was set up, the structure of it, and the different approaches that were used. Um, now, if uh, the study actually used a specific intervention, a healthcare procedure of some sort, uh, or a public health intervention of some sort, they'll typically expl explain what intervention was done. Did they go up out into the community and provide information about a healthcare uh, service? Or did they do a specific medical procedure? They'll explain what, what was done so that you as a reader can understand that as you're, you're going forward in the paper. Um, then they might provide some information about what data they collected and what their strategy was for doing that. Did they do a survey? Um, did they collect biological information? Uh, um, did they do interviews with people? Right. So those are the different ways that you might uh, get information to for the study. Um, and then if there's specific measurement tools, so uh, sometimes if you're using a specific uh, validated tool, validated survey, um, component, um, they'll talk about what those different components are so that you understand what exactly what exactly the questions were that were asked. The final section in the method section will typically be the data analysis section. So they'll explain in that section how they uh, put together, for example, their interviews to come up to it with conclusions, or um, how did they do statistical analyses of the information that they collected. Um, now, a method section will typically have some reference to most of these components, uh, but sometimes they'll be combined together in sections. Uh, sometimes the order will be slightly different than I presented here, but that's generally what you'll, you'll typically see. Now, the idea of the method section is that you have the information you need in order to understand the nitty gritty details of what they did in this, in this research study. Uh, because of that, the style is typically very structured, a very, very terse, and um, it's essentially a recipe. So if someone wanted to go and do this other this study and replicate that study, they could actually do that. All right. So the next section that you'll see is the results section. And this is where the author attempts to give the reader the information that they collected in as clear a way as possible. So typically in a results section, they'll say a little bit about who was engaged in that study, so the demographics of the, the population, a little bit about uh, information about how that study rolled out uh, in terms of how many people actually enrolled in the study, uh, you know, what the attrition rate is and, and stuff like that. So uh, you will see some of that, that information usually at the beginning of the results section. 
sometimes you'll see in the methods, but typically in the results section. Um, <clears throat> Then you'll see them provide the data that they collected in the study. Um, so they'll write out, they'll essentially usually um, march through the different ideas as they relate to each, each other. And very often they'll build on it from sort of more basic findings to more complex findings. Um, but or they'll essentially or else sometimes they'll just pick a logical framework for going through the results. And this is going to vary widely depending on the, the, uh, the type of scholarship that's being done. Uh, in that results section, you'll see, see, see figures and tables. And for qualitative studies, you'll see quotes. And very often, these are uh, in the figures, tables, and quotes, you'll find what the researcher is most interested in having you know. And they, they're the, that's the data that they really want to stand out for you, uh, typically. Now, the, the goal of the results section is to be, again, very factual. Uh, as a researcher, you're supposed to be just providing the information that you collected. Um, and it should be logically presented so that you understand what was done. All right, the discussion section is sort of a different beast than the rest of the paper. And uh, this is a section that uh, tries, the, the authors are trying to synthesize what they found for you and explain it in context. So usually the first paragraph or two is going to be summarizing the results of the study, the findings of the study. Uh, and this is often where the researchers will emphasize the key things that they found. Uh, as they go forward into the results, in the following paragraphs, they're going to continue to talk about the results, but very often they'll do it in conjunction with talking about other research that has looked at these questions before. So putting that research in context of, of larger scholarship. Um, they also might say a little bit about why this is important for theory. So to what extent, if they were basing their research on the theory, to what extent did this match up with what they were uh, anticipating based upon that theoretical understanding? All right. Now, you'd also hope that if in the process of doing this work, they found something unexpected, that they would also provide you with some, some comments about that in terms of why, why that might have occurred. All right. Um, now, one of the most important sections in the results, in the discussion section is they should also have a, a component, which is essentially a limitations section. Sometimes it will be strengths and limitations. So they'll talk about what were the good things about their study and what were the possible ways in which it might be limited in, in uh, detecting certain things. As I'll talk about again, research is always has limitations. There's no perfect studies, right? So the hope here is that the author has honestly pre presented to you what they see as being important constraints on how effectively you can pl apply this research in other contexts. What are the ways in which there might be problems, perhaps, with what was, uh, what was found in this study? Uh, sometimes, if this study is uh, clinically oriented and they want to uh, talk about what this means for nursing or public health, they might have a specific section that, that talks about their recommendations for, for practice. Uh, and that can be really quite helpful for seeing why this actually matters uh, to healthcare. And then they should say something a little bit about uh, sort of future directions, where they see this going, what they see as being important possible ways that this could be used in, in future scholarship. And they'll also present, uh, usually at the end, they'll present some sort of summary conclusions about what this paper uh, showed. So the style of this section tends to be a little bit more interpretive and sometimes you'll have elements of speculation in it where they'll they'll go beyond the data itself to say what they think it might mean uh, and that's why why this section tends to look a little bit different than other sections you'll have more of the author's opinions coming out in the section then of course the final section is the references section so the reference section will be useful for you to go to to find other papers uh, that are relevant here all right so that's a basic anatomy of how a paper is set up. Uh, this is going to be really useful to you because uh, being able to go and quickly find the different types of information you need uh, relies on you actually knowing where that different information can be found. So uh, there it is, uh, the basic anatomy of a research paper. Thank you for listening and uh, take care.